Hey everybody, it's Melissa Blizzard. I'm a DonorsChoose.org National Teacher Ambassador, and this walkthrough video will take you step by step in how to create your own project on DonorsChoose.org. If you find this video helpful, please use my referral link when you start your project. Um, just type this URL into your browser and click on it, then create an account or start your first project. This is how DonorsChoose.org tracks whether or not I am doing my job as an ambassador. So I very much appreciate you using my link. If you send me your project to the email listed in the description after you've used my link, I will come back and I will make a donation to your project. If you don't already have an account, you will need to create one. Please use a non-school email because you can take this donor's shoes account with you, whether or not you change buildings, which is wonderful. Um, so use a non-work email and use a password that you're gonna remember so you aren't constantly trying to dig that out. All right, so once you've made an account, you're signed into donorschoose.org, you're gonna click the menu button and you can go to projects and you're just ignore all the many things it's telling me that I need to do. And we're going to click on create a project. All right, for our first kind of project, there are two we could do. We could do a standard project, which is where you either get some stuff for your classroom or you could do a field trip or a class visitor that way. The other kind of project is a professional development project. Um, you can go somewhere and go to a class. I went to the AOSA conference in Cincinnati this year on a Donors Choose Grant, which was awesome. I took first steps in music training on a Donors Choose Grant. And you could also just get books and material for your classroom. So if I wanted to get the uh, Fire Robin Fundamentals book, this would be a great way that I could do that without having to spend my own money. So for today, we're gonna talk about a standard project because this is what you're gonna wanna do for your very first project. A couple of things on this page that I want you to note. Down at the bottom, it says find match offers. You could click on this one. You can scroll down, make sure you've got your correct state selected because sometimes they vary state to state. You could scroll through and read and see if any of these project uh, matches are gonna match what you're doing. I happen to know because I look at the project matches constantly that none of these are going to match what I am doing right now. Um, that's okay, um, we'll just come back another time and get a match. Okay. If I had a campaign code for a match that I needed, I could click apply campaign code. I would type my campaign code in here and click OK. And that would like, let people know that I want to be considered for that match. Some matches have campaign codes. Some are applied automatically if you ask for certain items. It just depends on what you're asking for. All right. I don't have any of that today, unfortunately. So I'm going to click let's go. And the nice thing about the Donors Choose website is that once you fill in demographics by your students, it's going to remember that for you. So I filled in what I taught on my last project and it remembers that. What my project is gonna benefit, benefit every kid that I teach because I'm asking for drums today. So I will click pre-K through fifth grade. If this was something that I was gonna do only with my pre-Kers, I would only click pre-K. Um, most of what I do impacts all of my students and I'm sure for most of you, it's probably the same way your materials impact most of your kids. But however, if I was taking my eighth grade band on a field trip, I would click eighth grade and I would unclick all these other ages. Um, you know, if I was doing um, something that was just for my pre cares I would click just pre-k however today my project is going to be for a drum that's going to be in my classroom all my grade levels will use it so I'll click them all um, click pick the primary grade levels so will benefit for your project mostly I do world drumming with third through fifth grade so I'll click those it doesn't really matter as far as getting your project funded it's just a way that donors can search so this is it is mostly going to benefit my third through fifth so I'll put that there number of students that will benefit from this project this year um, all 500 of my kids will use this drum so I'm going to put down 500. The next section says describe your students and it says tell us what you love about your students this is really important because you want to make sure that your donors know that you're the kind of teacher whose class they wish they had been in as a kid. That's what donors want. They want to make sure kids are having great educational experiences. So you're going to want to talk about what makes your kids great. You're also going to want to talk about what their challenges are. Um, you are welcome to read my example here. This is not the only way or may probably even the best way to write about your student section. 
What I try to do is talk about how much I love my kids. I talk about what's important in my classroom. And I also talk about the fact that I do teach in a high poverty school. Um, and I make sure that my donors know that my kids need help. So um, you can do that in any kind of way you do. You can see that um, I think I said that we have free breakfast and lunch daily and that lets people know that my, my kids are, are, are in need of, of food and that lets them know that we don't have a lot for supplies. Um, remember, I said that we're in a Title I school. Not everyone knows what that means, these citizen donors. So make sure that if you do use teacher words, that you put them into standard English so that your donors understand because a lot of them aren't educators. And um, if you just say, well, we're in a Title I school, so we need supplies, they don't necessarily know what that means. Make sure that they know. Classroom photo, again, once you load one in, donor shoes is gonna save it. I usually change mine a couple of times a year, just kind of depending on what's going on in my room. And um, the last great photo that I clicked is the one that I wanna put up. I love this one. My kids were doing a creative movement exercise and I don't know, I just felt like they were really nailing it and they looked so fun and happy that I used this one. I've had pictures of them with instruments before and of course it depends on what you're asking for. Some people change it with every project. You know, if they're um, asking for a snare drum for their snare drum line, they might put up a picture of three kids with a snare drum and one kid looking sad without it. Um, you know, and those kind of things will bring your donors in. We'll click save and continue. I love that it saves everything for you so you don't have to retype things. Okay, so for your next one, you've got some choices up here at the top. Are you getting supplies? Are you doing a class trip or a visitor? Today, we're just gonna do a standard supply project. Class trips and visitors are a little harder. Feel free to contact me if you need to do those and I will walk you through it. Um, notice that it just warns me here. I'm on my phone so I can do a screen grab. You can't shop Amazon business from your phone and I do get a lot of stuff from Amazon. So if you need to use Amazon, just go on your computer to do it. Um, I'm gonna go to Woodwind and Brasswind today. They have a lot of great stuff for music educators. Although I think I've used almost every vendor depending on what I've been looking for. You'd be surprised what some of these other vendors have for music teachers. Woodwind Brasswind is great though for most of your music stuff. And when I go to Woodwind and Brasswind, I'm just gonna search for what I need. I want Remo key tuned tubanos. Let's see what I get when I search. Ah, here are the Remo 100 series tunable tubanos. That's what I want. I'm gonna click on it. Here it comes. All right, so here are the tubanos that I want. I like these drums a lot. We're gonna select a style. Let's see. Um, I'm going to look at the sizes that I need, really read the descriptions. Um, one day I will tell you the embarrassing story of the time I thought I was ordering a pair of symbols for my classroom, but I didn't. I ordered one symbol and I got one symbol from a Duner Shoes project. I was so heartbroken. It was one of my very first projects. Oh, it was bad. Okay, so um, I'm going to look for the style that matches what I have and the size that I need. Let's see, this 27 by 14 inch. I'm going to add it to my cart. It's asking me if I want a protection plan. That's up to you. I'm saying no, we have insurance in my school. I'm gonna continue shopping and maybe I wanna get a 10 inch one as well. And I'm gonna add it to my cart. And I'm gonna say no thanks on that protection plan. I'm gonna, that's all I want for right now. I'm gonna proceed to my cart. This is the best part. I love this so much. It says proceed to check out, but we don't want to check out because we're not going to pay for this ourselves. And if ever you're shopping for donors shoes and it asks you for a credit card number, you've made a mistake. Just backspace, backspace, backspace till you get back to where you are. You should never, ever, ever put in your own credit card number. We're going to scroll down and instead of proceeding to check out, we're going to transmit to donors shoes. Oh, by the way, don't try to add in any coupon codes. You can't use them on donors shoes. Transmit to donors shoes. Watch this. It's like magic. It loads all the information for what you online shopped for into your project. I've got two of the 100 series tunable tubanos. And you can see that one, the bigger one is $280. The smaller one is $205. And um, my materials cost is $485. Now, here's what you have to watch. The vendor shipping charges, Woodwood and Brasswind does not charge to ship through donor's shoes, which is great for us. We do have to pay sales tax. Um, I know you're a school, I get it. I know that donor's shoes is a 5013C, I get that too. These are the rules, you can look up on their website why that is, you just gotta pay the sales tax. Third party uh, payment processing fee, uh, fulfillment and labor materials, $30. Every single donor's shoes project, regardless of the amount of materials in the project, be it $100 or $2,000, is gonna tack on a $30 cost to your project. This is how they pay the people, the hourly wage of the people who order 
and, and, and fulfill your stuff on donors Jesus end. Okay. This is part of how they keep themselves running. Then it says your total project cost is five fifty five seventy four, And then the next number you see that $98 and seven cents, it says suggested donation to support donorschoes.org. This is added onto every single project. No, you cannot take it off. It is a 15% addition to your project that does things like the following keeps their lights on pays for the servers that run this website uh, it helps to pay for their staff it helps them work with corporations to set up corporate matches and if my um, one of my two bonos went up in price say it went from that that 14 inch went from 280 dollars up to 300 dollars in the four months that i have to fund this project that money helps cover costs like that they would not come back to me and say sorry your two bonos cost more now so you need to fundraise more money they would just buy them for me and so this pot of money covers things like that um it's a really great thing that they do so that it covers their costs and our costs um, without us having to worry about anything extra so my total project goal for this is six hundred fifty three dollars and eighty one cents now look they're telling me something in red it says your project has a 79 percent chance of being fully funded because it's over six hundred dollars your best chance of getting funded is if you keep your project small under six hundred dollars i know that in my school because of our socioeconomic status i cannot go to my parents and say hey guys we need to work together and fund six hundred fifty three dollars to get this thing funded we can't do that um in some of my schools i could my parents my band parents would have worked together to get it funded in this school they just aren't able to so it's better for me to keep my project total small so okay i'm gonna go up here and just so that my project funds quickly and i don't have to stress about it i'm gonna remove the smaller of the two bonos i don't really need that one right now i'll do it on another project I'm gonna click remove oh look and now my project total is three hundred ninety two dollars and thirty eight cents um, if I had had a match that would only be about two hundred dollars to fund and that would be great but even still at four hundred dollars we can get this project funded and it even says that here nice work lowering your project goal they're encouraging you to have a low project total to make your project easy to fund all right so going down summarize what's in your cart I'm gonna type in here help give my students a tunable that's about right. Tunable to Bono to experience world drumming. And I'm going to give it an exclamation point because I'm excited about it. Oh, it says that I have to add two extra words. I'm going to say give help give my students a key tune to Bono to experience world drumming oh it still doesn't like it i still have to add another world help me give my students a key tune to bono to experience world drumming in our steam lessons oh now it says nice i typed enough words okay save and continue and you can play with it till it looks like you want it to um next project title i think your project title is one of the most important things that you can do because it really grabs your donor's attention. I'm terrible at project titles. I usually ask for help. So um, for this one, I'm going to call this Ants Marching to the Beat. Maybe not the best title. Maybe I will come back and, and change it later. But I know that I'm going to use these two bonos for a musical that I'm doing the musical Bugs. So that kind of fits with what I'm doing. Okay, in the next section, the about your project section, how will these materials make a difference in your students' learning? Um, they have some examples you can click on if you need it. Here's what I wanna tell you about the project essay. One, your donors do read them, so make sure that you're explaining why you need these items, not why you want these items. Why you need these items is very important. The other thing that you want to do here is make sure that every item that you ask for, you name in your essay. Say, for example, I asked for 36 black three ring binders, a pack of pencils, and a packet of computer paper because I needed to print some rhythm exercises that I had written for my kids. In my project, I would have to talk about the fact that I needed pencils, 
binders, and printer paper. If I left one of those things out, the screener who looks at my project would send it back to me. One of the ways that they are accountable to their donors is making sure the donors know exactly what you're getting and what you're using it for. So you have to list every item in here and why you're using it. You don't have to justify why you need 100 pencils. You can just say, I need pencils so we can write on our papers. Um, but you have to say why you need them. Okay, so to save you guys the pain of watching me type an essay, because it does take me forever, I pre-wrote my essay about why I need these drums. I'm just going to grab my essay out of my notes. If I can, I'm gonna grab my essay out of my notes here. Gracious sake. And I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna paste it right here into my project. Let's scroll up and make sure that it's all formatted correctly after I've done this. Okay, you can see what I've said about my project. Um, one of the things that Donors Choose does is the first sentence of the second paragraph, it highlights, it makes it bigger and italicized when it formats your project. You're going to know which sentence that is because it's going to be in green. So whatever you have in green, you want that to be something that's really going to grab your donor's attention. Um, so I'm talking about rural drumming here. And I'm stalking, talking about my unit with entomology and music because I'm doing the musical bugs and how I'm going to use these. The last thing I say in every project is thank you for considering my project. Um, I always say thank you at the end. I just, I don't know, I just feel like it's polite. If someone's read that far, I just wanna say thank you to them. I think that people wanna give to a teacher that they think is very, very polite. Okay, next one, subject areas, you can pick two, and I suggest that you always pick two. Obviously, this is a music project, so I'm going to click on music. I could click performing arts as well, but I don't think that's smart because this, indicates how it's gonna show up in their search algorithm. So I would never pick two of the same subject area. For this one, because I'm doing the musical bugs, I'm gonna pick environmental science as my second subject area, because I am gonna talk about bugs and science with my kids. So I've picked two subject areas in different subjects. Um, if I was working on music reading skills, I might pick literacy and language. Um, if I was connecting this with a social studies lesson, I might pick something under history and civics. Um, and sometimes there is one down here, not special needs. There's one somewhere in here, maybe under applied learning. This says parent involvement. This is a great one too. If I include one of the other ones, I could click parent involvement, um, college and career prep. There's lots of things that you can pick. So look under all the different subjects and really decide what this impacts. Um, you want your donors who are searching for something in particular to find your project. I'm going to save and continue. Guys, that's it. I did it. I wrote this whole project. So on um, this page, if anything was wrong, it would be highlighted in red. Say I hadn't typed enough on, on a certain example, it would um, make sure that I go back and I fix it. I can scroll down, make sure I haven't said anything ridiculous. I don't have any glaring typos. Check, make sure I asked for what I wanted to. For example, two symbols. If I need two symbols, not just one. Um, and you scroll all the way down to the bottom, make sure your school and demographics are correct, especially if you've recently changed schools. And then you're gonna submit your project. I'm not gonna submit this project right now. I'm really honest about this. I like to wait for a good match offer because I do teach in a low socioeconomic school. So I'm going to wait for a match offer to cut the price of that in half before I hit submit. And hey, if a literacy match comes up, I might change this environmental science to literacy um, so that it fits the, the parameters of that project. And that's okay, because I believe as music teachers, we teach all the things. So, um, you know, I might have to change one of those subject areas to fit the match offer that I'm going for. So make sure that you've really read any match offers you're trying for. Then you would hit submit your project. If you are a first time submitter, for the first seven days that your project is live, if people use a promo code when they check out their donation will be doubled at no cost to them which is amazing i believe right now that promo code is called liftoff and they just have to type it in and it will uh, be doubled if someone you know donates your project and forgets to use it right to the help center they will help you get that applied um, it's a great way to get your project donated uh, fulfilled very quickly is by using these promo codes and utilizing your matches. So you'll submit your project and then you're going to follow Melissa Blizzard's instructions for getting a project funded quickly. That is your best way to go. All right. So that's about it. I hope that this was helpful to you. If you have any problems, feel free to reach out to me, your fairy grandmother at blizzardm at McDuffie. 
www.k12.georgia.us. Reach out to me. I will be happy to help you. Good luck to you on funding your very first project.